Okay, so now that I went in and I added eyebrows, I put them on both sides so I wasn't like weird and eyebrowless on one side and not on the other. Um, and then I put on at least one coat of mascara. Um, I might put on another one before I put on the lashes, but I've got one coat on for now. I curled my lashes um, and I made sure one thing that you make sure you want to do in the like with the 60s look, if you're not going to draw in a bunch of individual lashes, um, I would definitely put a lot of mascara on your lower lashes. Now, if you're somebody um, whose eyes like tear up a lot, that may not work that well on you so that may be some time um, when you may need to have somebody go in and like draw in individual lashes. My lower lashes are pretty long um, so I feel like I'm able to get a good amount of definition um, by just putting on some mascara. Waterproof might be good for that if somebody has to wear it for a long time um, or on stage or if they're crying or whatever it is. Um, and then I also went in and I just took a little bit of the black and I just kind of connected it under my eye. Um, some people will go in like on their waterline on this inner part and add in white. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that just because I feel like it's it can be hard to find um, liners that are safe to put there so I feel like if you're working on yourself um, then by all means do it and that's fine but um, if you're working on somebody else and if you don't know if the eyeliner that you have available to you is safe to put on the waterline um, I really don't recommend it so if you really do want to get that look um, I didn't do that but I feel like just because I have that black under there that kind of makes that part pop out more so that's an option or you can choose to kind of lower everything um, and you can put a little bit of like white down here instead of having the black there and then put a little bit of like the shading under it and that'll kind of give you that illusion and have it be a little bit safer um, for the person's eye. So I have to think it's not like it's a quick photo shoot or something. If somebody's going to wear this on stage or like for film, like they're going to be in it for a while. So you need to make sure um, that you are doing whatever they're going to be most comfortable in. Um, so we're going to leave this side for now. We'll go back and do lashes um, at the very end. And now we're going to work on the 70s side. Um, so like I said, so it's a little bit, I'm a little bit bronzer and tanner. It's a little harder to tell um, just because I am so pale, but I am slightly bronzy on this side. Um, and then on this side, we're going to do kind of, I feel like the classic look that I think that people um, kind of associate with the 70s. And I think that is sort of like that, like powder blue eyeshadow. Um, was everyone wearing powder blue eyeshadow? No, um, but I think that again, kind of going back to like what we were talking about with like the mod 1960s look is that with stage, I feel like a lot of times we have to take um, whatever comes to mind, like the fastest for people and that that's what we need to put on stage and we're associating things with time periods um, to help kind of like tell the story better. So um, even though everybody may not have makeup like this, if my character is like younger like going to the disco or something like that then it would be totally appropriate I feel like for them to have um this blue eyeshadow otherwise you could do something like shimmery bronzy that was very trendy um the look is just very much to be wearing makeup and it's a lot less of this like definition um unless you are going with more like the punk style um then by all means obviously you would have um more of like that definition where like that kind of started a little bit in the 60s and you can kind of see like if you were doing some of like the really really early stuff that was starting um you may have some of that definition on this side but otherwise um it's gonna be um more like in the 70s with the punk scene that we see that uh but we're gonna kind of save some of that stuff for the 80s look I think um so in order to do this side um I just wanted to show you guys like another thing to do since I know like not everybody has um tons of eyeshadow or everything I personally don't have powder blue eyeshadow um but I do have it in a cream makeup um so this is just like a regular cream makeup um it looks a little bit more lavender but it is actually uh kind of like a baby blue um so this is just like your Ben Nye foundations um like the colors that you all have it's just a Krylon super color um so it's going to work the same way but um what you have to keep in mind is that this isn't going to dry down on its own um so i need to set it with a powder so i'm going to use just like a regular like colorless face powder you could use like a tinted face powder you could set it with an eyeshadow um whatever it is that you have but um if you're going to use a cream if it's yours then um you can just use it directly right but if it's not yours um it's always better to like scrape things out i feel like so since this is something for my kit um i'm definitely going to scrape it out um just because i want to make sure that um it's sanitary sanitary for the next time that i'm going to use it right um so i'm going to go ahead um and i'm going to be like super sanitary i'm going to like spray down my spatula um and then we want to wipe that off and you just want to make sure that um everything you're doing if you're working on other people you're always keeping things uh, as sanitary as possible so you can just use it like off the spatula you can scrape it onto a palette if you want to um i use palette paper a lot that you use for like art i like to use it for makeup because that's like super sanitary and disposable um whatever works as long as you're keeping it sanitary um so with the creams you can pretty much apply it the same way um 
that you would like a powder eyeshadow. You just have to be mindful of the fact that it's going to move around a little bit more. I still usually use um, a primer, even if I'm just using like a cream. Um, but you probably don't necessarily need one because creams are sticky, so they'll be okay. And then you're just going to set it anyway. Um, you can use your fingers for this if you're working on yourself. I'm going to use a brush. Um, just because, again, I feel like if I get in the habit of using my fingers, um, then I'm tempted to do it on other people, too. And you know you should never um, be doing that when you're working on other people, right? Um, so I can go ahead and just kind of, like, layer this on. But you can see, like, it can get a ton of color really, really quickly. Um, and so in the 70s, um, the trend, like I was saying, it's a lot less. Like, unless you were doing, like, the punk thing, um, the trend was a lot less of like the super like defined kind of crease area and it was mostly just like you'd kind of see like one color all the way up and sometimes they would like highlight underneath it. Um, so we're going to go more um, with that kind of a look with what we're doing. Um, so I'm just going to spread out this cream um, and you might need like two separate brushes to do it so you're probably going to need one um, that you're going to apply it with and then this is probably going to be a little bit too tacky um, to really um, allow you to blend it properly. Um, so I'm going to get it mostly just on my lid for now, and then I'm going to get a clean brush that has nothing else on it, um, or maybe this is when you start using your finger or a brush if you applied with your finger, um, to help blend it all the way up to kind of like shear it out. Um, so to put it on, you definitely want to like pat it onto the skin more, um, to help you get, um, a fuller coverage because it can be kind of easy for these things, um, to get sort of patchy. Um, so kind of keep that in mind and then you can go ahead and grab a brush that has nothing else on it, um, just to kind of help you blend everything up. Um, so to do that, I would probably use something that's like a little bit, um, like fluffier than whatever you applied it with. So I probably would use something a little bit more like compact to apply it and then something fluffy to kind of like blend it back out. Um, and then you're going to just do like little circles and that's going to help you kind of shear it out. So you can see like what's cool with creams is that like they can be like as opaque as you want them to be, but then I can also like really shear it out um, if I want to. And I promise it looks super lavender on here, but it is actually very, very, very light blue. Um, in real life not in YouTube life right um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like move this back and forth and do little circles to help it blend um, and kind of keep it more rounded so it's not gonna have this sort of like harsher like angle that you see in a lot of like the mod makeup it's just gonna be sort of like a softer blended look um, and that was a lot more, I feel like, of, like, what the 70s were. So even though this is not necessarily, like, a natural color, um, they still wanted to be sort of, like, more, like, natural looking, um, but in, a, like, a very done-up way. So they weren't necessarily, like, drawing in these super, like, harsh lines or anything, um, but they still wanted to have, like, this bright, bold color. It's just in, like, a softer kind of a way. Um, and then I'm going to take just kind of, like, a fluffier, like, blending brush, and we can kind of shear that out. So I'm not going to take it all the way up to my eyebrow, um, but I am going to go back in uh, with a lighter color once I set this to kind of blend it out. So you can see like if you don't set creams quickly, um, they do start to crease. So that's why um, once you get it to where you want to, you really need to make sure that um, you put some powder on it. So whether that's an eyeshadow or um, your face powder, whatever it is, you really need to make sure um, that you get this set because otherwise it's going to crease, um, and it will definitely come off if you touch it. So if you're sending somebody on stage, um, make sure that if it is a cream that does not, um, set, that you powder it down. Otherwise you are definitely going to regret it. Um, and then you can just take a brush and usually you need to open your eyes, like not open, but have your eyes closed. Um, obviously you don't want to open your eyes when you're powdering, right? That would be a huge mistake. Please don't do that. Please keep your eyes closed when you're powdering them, y'all. Um, but you need to like have your eyes closed, but kind of like, um, lift up your eyebrows is the thing that I meant to say. Um, and that's going to help make sure that you get into like all the little like creases, um, of your eye for lack of better words, because if you don't, then if you have any spot that's still tacky, you kind of like run the risk of it like smearing around. Um, and so this is just like regular um, like setting powder and I'm just kind of taking it and I'm patting it over anywhere that's creamy. So just like you would set your foundation on your face or your concealer on your face or whatever it is, um, you want to do this in the same way. So this seems a little crazy and a little intense because we still have to go in and really blend it out. Um, but if you do look at a lot of the pictures from the 70s, it is pretty much 
um, a lot of the color is just one straight color all the way up, um, which is definitely going to probably seem a little bit weird to all of us because that's certainly not um, what a lot of us are used to, but again, um, we're not necessarily concerned about the makeup that we like to do right, it's the makeup that uh, is right for the period um, and for whatever it is that we are doing. Um, so once you're kind of happy with like where that color is at, um, we can go in and kind of add like a lighter color with it. So I'm just going to take, um, like a lighter shade to kind of go in and blend this out. And so this isn't like a pure white, it's kind of like a frosted white. Um, cause that's another thing that you're going to see a lot of in the seventies is like frosted everything, um, becomes kind of trendy. So I can take this right over the cream now and it'll just kind of blend into it um, since the cream is set. So you can certainly still put things over it just like we can put like our blush and everything um, over our foundation when it's powdered. Um, but I can't necessarily do much to like disturb the actual placement of the blue. So that's going to stay in place but I can still add things over it to kind of help like soften it out a little bit. Um, and so again, we're just kind of going in the places that we normally like to have things be a little bit lighter. Um, and so since I used a cream to do the blue, I wasn't worried because obviously I'm not going to have any fallout if it's a cream. Um, but if this was like a blue eyeshadow, I definitely would have done that um, before I did my foundation and stuff just because otherwise my whole under eye would probably be blue right now. Um, so that's like kind of another benefit I think um, of having to use the creams is that you won't get that same like crazy fallout or if you use like water activated, um, you're going to get a lot of color and it's not necessarily going to be as messy. Um, as if you're using powders and to this in theater I feel like so often we have access to like all these cream colors and we don't have all the powder colors And I think that can get frustrating sometimes when you are asked to do looks like this um, So that's why like I really wanted to show you all um, Just using like a regular cream makeup that you can still do all these same looks um, with all the like basic colors that um, you might have in your kit, you might have to get creative with like mixing the color what you want, but as long as there's something to set it with, um, you can really do a lot of the same stuff um, that I'm doing in these videos that you're going to see in other videos or what what have you um, with the kits that you have, even though they do seem a little bit limited. Um, powder eyeshadows are definitely a convenience that we all love, um, but creams are certainly okay. So obviously... Um, some creams aren't going to be okay for the eyes. A lot of like lip colors and lip products you really shouldn't be putting on your eyes. Um, again, I don't think like great harm will come to you like I said before, but um, what you put on your own face is one thing, but if you're going to put it on somebody else, um, you really need to be careful because you don't want to do anything that might run the risk of like irritating someone's skin um, or hurting them, right? Because we want people to be comfortable when they're on stage. That's like the number one goal um, is that one, people are like safe and comfortable, and two, that everything fits the aesthetic, but number one priority should always be like your actor's comfort. Um, so please don't do anything that's going to irritate their skin if you know beforehand that it will. Um, don't do it. So just be careful when you're using like reds and pinks and things like that, but um, in general, um, most of the theatrical creams you're going to run into should be safe to use um, on your eyes as well as like other parts of your face, but... Um, just be careful if something is says that it's like a lip product or even sometimes some blushes you're not really supposed to put on the eye. Um, but a lot of times it's mostly just like the lips, um, that you might run into problems. So, um, even though in the 70s they were very like, like one tone <laughs> monochromatic, I feel like, um, if we send somebody on stage like that, it might look a little bit, a little bit off. Um, so I'm going to shade it just like slightly, um. I'm not going to do anything like crazy, it's not going to be as dark as this, but just um, to give a little bit of definition, just because I feel like with my eyes, because they are um, the way that they are and they are so large, it is so much blue, so I feel like it's nice just to have like a small bit of shading, just so that you're not on stage with like a giant blue eye and like a giant eyelash when we're done with it, right? Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to take um, just like a slightly darker color, so I'm actually going to take um, like a little bit of like a very very light like brown color um and I'm gonna be really really careful with it um and I'm gonna really really lightly kind of put that in my crease um uh, and it's only to give like the smallest bit of definition but again um since we're not doing this for like a photo shoot, we're doing this for stage, um, something like that's probably going to look a lot more flattering because you're giving somebody um, a little bit of their definition back because um, we have a lot less control, I feel like, um, over lighting and stuff when somebody's on stage because they're going to be moving around. They're not just in like one stationary spot like they could be for like a photo or something where you know you can manipulate it to get like the exact angle um, that's going to look best on them. Um, that is not necessarily 
um, going to be the case for today. So something like that doesn't really change um, the color or anything. I'm still very obviously wearing a lot of blue eyeshadow, but um, just doing something like that um, is going to give you um, a little bit more of like a face, I feel like, on stage. And it's usually just like a little bit more flattering on people. Um, so as far as the eyeliner goes, a lot of times eyeliner was also like fairly natural um, in the 70s compared to like everything we saw in the 60s, right? Um, so I'm just going to do like that thin um, black line again just because I feel like that's what most people um, are comfortable doing for stage two instead of having to do something super fancy and crazy. And two, I think more of us probably have like black eyeliner available to us than we would have like a dark blue or something. Because certainly if I had like a super like dark navy, like that could be really pretty for this. But again, um, we're working on stage and we just want people to have faces. So in like real life, maybe people didn't wear this kind of eyeliner when they wore eyeshadow like this. But if I put somebody on stage and they were wearing no eyeliner, they might look a little bit weird um, and their eyes might get kind of like lost and everything else. Um, so I think it's always a good idea just to put a little bit on if you are going to do any kind of eye makeup for stage. Um, if you're really, really close to people, then you might not have to, but um, I think it just helps to define the eye a little bit. So I'm not going to like draw out any kind of like dramatic wings or anything because again, I feel like a lot of like this 70s makeup where it's not obviously it's not like natural because of like of the color palettes and stuff that they use a lot and um, it's not as like precisely defined as a lot of other things um unless you're talking about again like 70s punk or something like that they had very defined liner um so if that's the look you're doing then obviously you should go with that and embrace that but if you're just doing something like a little bit more on the normal side um I'm really just doing um this eyeliner just so that when I put lashes on I don't look crazy and it just gives like a little bit of a background it's not necessarily because everybody was going around um, with a line of black eyeliner right it's just to kind of help um, give you a little bit of like a face once you're on stage but obviously like there's still like enough of a difference between like the really intense mod side um, and this side um, to kind of give you the obvious like difference in decades but um, still have it be like stage appropriate um, so another thing that was actually pretty trendy um, in the 70s was actually to do um, like really like iridescent and frosted shades like I had mentioned before so I can actually go ahead and just pop like um, a little bit of like a loose powder now I could have set um, my cream with this but I wanted to show you all like what setting it with just um, a regular face powder would be but I have like a pretty like light blue uh, iridescent shade that I can go ahead and just put on my lid and that kind of helps make it a little bit more as I block the entire camera right so good at being on YouTube you guys I'm so good at this um so I can put it's a little hard I feel like to see um in this but um I can just take a little bit of this and this will help punch up the color and then when that hits the light it's not necessarily going to be like overwhelmingly like glittery or shimmery but it kind of punches it up um just a little bit and it does kind of fit that um kind of disco world um, a lot of times shimmers on their own aren't like super intense so having that kind of a base under it that really helps um, it pop a little bit more um, so I like to use the two together um, I'm definitely very much like why use one color when you could use like all of them um, so you don't necessarily have to do that but um, I do think it helps when you do that and I think it's kind of nice to put like the subtle touches of the 70s in without it being like so frosted and white that like when somebody gets on stage it just doesn't even it looks a little bit off so I think doing like a subtle iridescent um is a better like nod to the period um maybe when you're under like bright stage lights than doing something that's like crazy frosted and intense um if that makes sense um so now that we're kind of at this point I'm gonna go ahead and um touch this up a little bit more put on mascara put on lashes um and then I'm gonna put on my lips and we will be done <laughs> 